today is a very important day. Yes, today is an important day, personally, for me and for my precious cargo because in the bag that I'm carrying now is MP. MP has hatched. This video then marks the end of an 11-month association of care and attention, looking after what's turned out to be a little lady or an empress here. It was on July the 26th, 2021, that I collected Empy, who was then a newly laid egg. That egg hatched and Empy's progress has been showed and followed by a number of people on both Facebook and on this YouTube channel. I featured a number of videos giving updates of Empy's progress. Today, marks the culmination of those 11 months. Now it's time for release and I'm heading down that way into a quiet and shaded part of Clipsdale Quarter here for the release. And here is MP. I've just let her out. She's just fired in her feet. She did fly about 10 yards and has settled on this bit of oak. It's amazing to see one of these butterflies. It's the first time I've seen the adult in Nottinghamshire. It does make me quite excited and I need to try and get some photos while I'm here of this beautiful butterfly well MP has made another brief and short flight which has gone up and is now on that branch that 
jumps out to the right in the center of the screen. She's up there. This is Purple Emperor Country. And the whole purpose of rearing MP and getting to this point was purely photographic to keep a record or obtain a record of the Purple Emperor larva and pupa. I would have liked to have got some fantastic shots of little MP after 11 months, but that's not the intention of doing this. The intention, aside from the photographs, was to get at least one Purple Emperor to adult. Because in the last few weeks, all the L5 larva, which are larva in the last instar, have disappeared. Little Emp is still tucked away at the top of that oak, sunbathing before flying off properly. And that's been the main key of everything in these last 11 months. Yes, I wanted to photograph all the instars and development of a purple emperor larva from the egg right through to adult, and I've done that. Yes, I would have liked to have got more footage of the release and of Empy before she flew properly, but at least I've got some footage. However, personally, it's more important that a purple emperor was released back into the wild. I've not took anything out of this. The population hasn't been diminished. And although I did take two eggs initially, one larva hatched, or both larva hatched, Empy did well, the other larva never ate a thing and died within a few days of hatching. But that's all part of the life cycle and the life and death situation and the mortality rate among butterflies and moths. In recent weeks, that mortality rate has really been come to prominence. And through the work of Nick and Samantha Brownley, who, to their credit, have done all the work on the Purple Emperor in Sherwood Forest, have found that that mortality rate in L5, or fifth instar larva prior to pupation, is high. All the larva that they were watching and monitoring that were L5 and uh, in the run-up to pupation, all but one have disappeared. It seems that there is suddenly a high predation rate of purple emperor larva. Now, purple emperor larva don't really do themselves any favours. They sit openly on the top of a leaf and they're prone to predation. What the predation is... And what it's done by, I don't know. There's a number of thoughts, but most likely is birds. Birds are feeding young now, and so a nice juicy purple emperor caterpillar fits the bill very nicely. It's all right, I'm just sat seeing if little Empy will take a flight as far as I know she's still at the top of that oak. It may seem to a lot of people that waiting 11 months to try and get to photograph or film a butterfly is rather a waste of time because the footage I've got is minimal and I've maybe got one photograph that I could use if I was desperate. But that's not the point. I got all the photographs that I wanted when I originally took two purple emperor eggs from the wild. MP grew and did really well, but the other egg hatched. The larva ate its eggshell, but then never ate a thing after that and had died after a couple of days. And that just shows the mortality rate within butterflies and moths. But the key thing was, I got all the photographs of the larva through the various instars and the pupa, and that the adult butterfly is now free to fly around and reproduce more purple emperors in Sherwood Forest. After those 11 months, I'm still very pleased that I did what I did. And that I took those two purple emperor eggs out of the wild and reared one successfully to be able to put at least one adult back into the wild. It's quite interesting, the predation rate of insects, especially butterflies and moths, 
is incredibly high. That's why insects on the whole produce so many eggs. If you're lucky out of a brood of a hundred eggs, probably only two may get through to adult stage. The rest get predated or parasitized. Now what's occurred in the last few weeks, and it's Nick and Samantha Brownley who once again are leading the way on studying the purple emperor here at Sherwood Forest and not getting any credit or recognition or thanks for the work that they do. But they've found in recent weeks that all but one of the L5, that's fits in star larva that they've been monitoring, have disappeared. The reason is unknown. It's clearly predation. But it could be parasitization as well. But it's funny how all of a sudden larvae in the last instance, some were in the process of preparing for pupation, have disappeared. Me taking little MP home and rearing MP in the safety of home for 11 months was in the end a good idea. There's very little chance that MP would have survived in the wild, it seems. It's also strange, really, as to why so many L5 larvae have succumbed and disappeared in the last few days. I mean, a lot of work has been done by Nick and Samantha on a night time using UV light to try and track the pupa down, but they've completely disappeared without trace. If you saw the video I did on MP as a fluorescent pupa a few weeks ago, that's why searches are done at night time, because UV light shows the fluorescent purple emperor pupa up so easily. Well, that's 11 months gone then. 11 months, but very worthwhile, very rewarding as well to get that magnificent butterfly flying around these tall oaks is quite wonderful. And to see the progress of that butterfly from the pupa, before that, the larva and the egg, where it all started on July the 26th, 2021. I remember being worried about little MP not eating on emergence from the egg, but she settled down and started eating as a larva and I knew we were going to be all right, at least for a while, because after a few months, the prospect of winter and getting MP through the winter started to rear its head. But with purple emperors, there's no mollycoddling and you need to leave them outside on the food plant in all weathers. And that's just what I did. Little MP sat and waited for the first warm days of spring on my little terraced house backyard. I remember that first day in March, that first warm sunny day, when I looked to do a quick check on MP, make sure it's still all right, still in place, only to find little MP was having a wander, the first wander. But at the time, there was no leaves out on the goat sallow she was on. The buds were starting to burst, but there was no leaves for MP to eat. MP knew that and plonked herself down at the side of an unopened bud and waited about a fortnight until that bud had opened. They obviously know by sitting down at the side of a bud. I know that might be quite a good camouflage, but being sat at the side of a bud, they can detect when that bud is opening and the leaves are starting to unfurl and expand. Once she started eating after hibernation, I knew we should be okay and progress through third and fourth and then fifth in star was pretty straightforward. The pupation process or the pre-pupation process was decidedly long. I've never known such a long period before, but it went well. Pupation occurred underneath a leaf and after three to four weeks, the results up there. So, thinking back, would I do it all again? Would I spend 11 months looking after, nurturing and protecting as much as I can another purple emperor larva? 
The answer is an undoubted yes. To release and get at least one purple emperor through to adult, to re-release back into the wild here at Sherwood Forest. Now that's what I call conservation. <laughs>